Good morning, brothers and sisters. So, I am going to share this dream with you that I had. Um, it was about flooding here in my neighborhood and in California. And so, I know I haven't been sharing a lot of my dreams really for a long time. And the Lord Jesus addressed some of this in a few of my dreams. He told me not to be a chicken. <laughs> and in another dream, um, I was there with a lion. And we know Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And... Um, he was loving on me and hold on I gotta come out the store and he was loving on me and there was a another lion there and I heard them talking and the one lion said to the lion that was loving on me and like purring and stuff he said what are you doing and my lion said I'm waiting on her and this is after prayer and you know telling the Lord Jesus Jesus I'm sorry I haven't been sharing a lot of things that you've shown me and I said I'm sorry I'm just afraid to because of all the backlash that I've gotten in the past and and um, it went on like this for three nights where he's been just loving on me and telling me he's waiting for me to to speak these things and write these things down a lot of the dreams that he showed me I I kind of stopped writing them down and the way I used to and um, but if you guys remember in previous videos, I've talked about the number 47 and how the Lord spoke to me in a dream and said the number 47 means flooding. Well, this has come back to my attention again. I see this number everywhere, especially right before I had this dream and the last couple of days. And the Lord Jesus has led me to other videos, like confirming my thoughts and what's been on my, my mind about the, what the Lord has spoken to me about this number and flooding. And there's been a lot of dreams and videos of just randomly popped up on my feed um, about an earthquake and seeing California, parts of California and in the Central Valley underwater and um, I mean my neighbor's address has the number 47 in it um, so in this dream I am in my house and I'm making sandwiches for people in my house and Peyton's there, my baby's there, and I'm making her a sandwich too. And this is representing in a spiritual way with my YouTube because I'm in the fridge in this dream and I'm looking at lunch meats and that's representing the meat of the word and I'm seeing is this is this good no it's like I'm going through this fridge and I'm like is this good no nope. can I serve that no nope, that's bad oh here's a good one okay let's put it on the sandwich let's serve it up and that's what we do when we are dividing the word when, and when we're listening to other people and what they're teaching and what they're saying or what they're saying they're in their dreams you know we are dividing that out and we are making sure that things line up with the word of God. We're making sure that um, everything points back to Jesus. 
that he died on the cross for us and rose again on the third day. And if we believe that, we are saved and we are sealed to the day of redemption. This is what the word says. We're saved by faith in what Christ did alone, period. The law does not save you. That is rotten lunch meat. Nobody should be serving up to anybody to eat and digest that the law will save you. Your obedience to the law will not save you. Jesus did it all and paid it all on the cross. And he fulfilled the law. People saying, oh, I, I was just answering someone the other day. And they were saying, no, we have to do the law and all this stuff and the Ten Commandments and to make us righteous and save us. And, and then they put that scripture in there that Jesus fulfilled the law talking about. And I said, exactly. <laughs> do you hear what you're saying? The Lord, he raised the bar on the law. Now, when you look a woman, look at a woman, you're uh, committing adultery. And then he, he made everybody know that we need a savior and that the law was contrary to us. Nobody could do the whole law. So people need to divide their lunch meats out and sniff out what's rotten and what's not. What's good to eat and what's not when they listen to people. If they're having a dream saying this or that or the other thing, uh-uh. They are not understanding their dream. Or maybe it's just from their carnal mind. <clears throat> the mind of the flesh. <clears throat> so getting back to the dream. I am sorting through lunch meats. No, not that one. Okay, let's do that one. And I look out. Something, I just get up and I look out the window. And here comes all this water. All through my neighborhood I could see it. As far as the eye could see. And it was dirty water. It was rising so fast, swirling all around the houses. And in this dream, Peyton was a twin. How many of y'all listening have had dreams about twins? I've had a lot of dreams about twins. I've seen other people have a lot of dreams about twins. And I believe that it represents the Jew and the Gentile. You know, like Jacob and Esau. And uh, one, okay, one Peyton was with me. And I looked down. And I see rushing down the side of this house. Uh, the water was rising. I see the other Peyton. And she's out there trying to get in this dirty water and play in the dirty water. And... And um, I told John, I said, hurry, hurry, run and grab her. And he's like, okay. He was already outside. He was already watching all this floodwaters uh, swell in the neighborhood. And I'm yelling out the window to him, get the baby. And he's like, really not worried about it, about her, which my husband represents Jesus. He's fine. He knows what's going on, you know. And... Um, he, he walks over and just swoops her up and he opens his massive gate like a yard gate and all the water that was surrounding our house just empties out and dissipates. So, um, and also our house was like on stilts, um, the only thing that kind of got flooded was the water came up just a tiny bit into one corner of our house, and that was it. There was no other damage. The Lord opened the gate, and all the water um, f was flowing away from our home. And everybody was safe, and everybody was fine. And another scene in that dream my aunt had come over to my house. Now, there's some problems in the family right now where a lot of us aren't talking. Um, there's just issues. Uh, and anyway, so in the dream, I was surprised to see she was at my house. Well, as I was making sandwiches, I looked into out the door. I think it was the living room or the kitchen. She was standing in there. 
and she wanted to talk to John. And I said, hold on, he's somewhere, he'll be right back. And when she turned to the side, I noticed she was pregnant, like ready to pop, pregnant. And this is not possible in real life. How many of you have had the pregnant dream where, uh, or you've heard of someone having the pregnant dream? Um, it's the woman uh, ready to give birth to the child. It's the rapture. It represents the rapture. And she's ready to pop. Now, my aunt is like Darwinism. Um, she does not, well, in this dream, the Lord is, is showing me that um, sometime, at some point in her life, because she was trying, in the dream, she was trying to hide her pregnancy from me. Um, that's her flesh. But at some point in her life, she has believed on Jesus Christ. That he came down, that he was born of a virgin, and that he, he died and rose again on the third day. At some point in her life, she got saved. Because the minute that you believe the gospel which is Christ died for the remission of all sins and rose again on the third day, you are saved. And you are sealed. You're once saved, always saved. Because she believed it by faith. And in the dream, she was massively pregnant, trying to hide it from me, hide it from me, and wanted to talk to my husband, which is a representative of Jesus. And she was waiting. And she was about to give birth so, um, and then this dream ended. Everybody was okay. So, because, and this is after asking the Lord, what, what is this 47? I mean, exactly what is it? Yes, flooding. Is it going to be my pipe burst again? Is it going to be, you know, it's not really raining here in California. I don't understand. Um, and then I started just all of a sudden started to be led to different videos of earthquakes in California, California underwater, which takes me back to four years ago when the Lord started showing me about ma a massive earthquake that is going to just, the bridges in San Francisco are going to collapse um, calamity. It's, it's going to be terrible. Not to mention the tsunami that will follow this earthquake. And the Lord showed me on my phone, because in this dream, I was looking out towards San Francisco. We're probably like not even two hours away, like an hour and 30 minutes away. And we have to go over the Altamont to get there. Um, I was looking out towards San Francisco and I screamed into my house. I said, earthquake. Then I looked down on my phone and the Richter number of it was a 9.6. A 9.6, that is massive, you guys. Depending on where it's at, it would create a massive, massive tsunami and it would kill many, many people. So, um, that is what I wanted to share with you and get out and do a video about that this is going to happen. And I think that I'm going to be here when that happens, but I think that the Lord is going to have his hand upon me and my family and a, a lot of other believers that live here in California um because that's always been in the back of my mind are we going to be here when all this stuff happens that you're showing us are we not going to be here um I think we're going to see some of it I know I think I believe I'm going to see some of it before the rapture and another thing um Sherry Rich, Sister Sherry Rich was touching on the dream I had about Putin 
and the woman and the Chinese uh, samurai warrior that I had a few years ago. Well, I turned on the news today and America is reaching out to China for help uh, against Russia. Now, this is really crazy because when I had that dream that Putin had that woman, her hands tied behind her back in this barn, and he told her, he told her, I have to go take care of some business. I'll be right back. And then when he left, she was kind of looking around the outside the door of this barn, and a samurai warrior looking type of guy came and said I will help you and free you if you want me to and she was like well I don't know she was a little undecisive about it but then she said okay and he said well you have to drink out of this bowl first so she leaned over to drink out of this bowl and he took his helmet off and he was like this vampire monster thing and he bit her on the back of the neck as she was leaned over. But as soon as he did this, she her her she her ropes came off of her hands. She rose up into the air and turned into what this thing was. They were exactly the same. They were like floating in the air with all this power and everything. It was so weird. And Putin came back in the barn and saw what happened and was enraged. And I, through the years, I kept thinking, okay, how is China or whoever this represents, Korea or wherever, how are they going to, why would they offer help to America? When is this going to happen while Putin is engaged with us? Because we're the woman. And then I turn and then Cherry does a video and then I see this too. It's pointed out to me. And I'm thinking, this is it. China is, America is saying, help, help, you know, over these negotiations with Ukraine and everything. And it's like, Russia is about to invade Ukraine, it looks like. And America is calling out to China. I'm thinking, this is it. And that dream was a three-part dream. In the end, there was a white and a black horse. And the white horse... um. They were both in a, an arena and the white horse's leg from the knee down had been cut off, but it had healed over and, but it could still run. It was fine. And there was a black horse. Well, the black horse bit the white horse on the back side, back of the neck. And that white horse took off running so fast. And the black horse was chasing after it. And that was the end of the dream. And I believe those represent nations. <clears throat> uh, Sherry sent me a picture of a Russian flag. And it actually had a man sitting on a white horse. Like military. And I thought, hmm. And also, I've had dreams about my grandmother's ranch which in my dreams it represents rapture and the start of the tribulation. And uh, I was shown like a thousand white horses and these 4-H, 4-H members. Uh, young people were sitting on top of these horses. And at the time I had a fear that my daughter didn't believe. My oldest daughter wasn't a believer. But the Lord showed me in this dream that she saved, that she did. She's she's a believer. She believes, because he he showed me in well in the dream. I was like, see, Ayla, you should get up on those white horses. You should get up on one. Too bad you never stayed in 4-H because she used to be in 4-H, but she dropped out of 4-H horses. I said you should have stayed. Then you could have been up on those white horses. But she wasn't supposed to be a part of those white horses. She wasn't supposed to get up on those white horses <laughs> <clears throat> that was not you know for her to be a part of but 
anyway, I wanted to share this with you. There's going to be a massive, massive earthquake in California. There's going to be flooding. Things are taking, you know, whether uh, I'm part of this flooding or earthquake before the rapture, I don't know. But, you know, my I just pray, Lord, please don't let me be here. But every time I dream of something like this, it's kind of like up in the air. Am I going to be here for it? Am I not going to be here for it? I don't know. I just put my faith and trust in the Lord, and that's what we all do. We just keep our eyes upon Him and know that we belong to Him. And I've seen many other dreams where floodings and earthquakes are coming, and the Christians, the believers, they are taken out of harm's way and or they're protected supernaturally protected by the Lord so all right you guys I love you and God bless you